Hey everybody, welcome back to my office where we normally do noise complaints, but in the past week since doing last week's episode with respect to audiophile addiction, I'm beginning to realize that there might be a way of structuring these particular episodes that are more helpful and more kind of off the cuff about AV and hi-fi topics, but that aren't necessarily spurred on by uh, AV news stories. So for going forward, I think with this video, and I might retitle a few old videos, but I think going forward, what I want to do with this space is really get to the heart of like some hi-fi, call it theory, or answering your direct questions, because as a result of that audiophile addiction episode, a lot of you wrote in, and it is because of one of you guys' letters that I'm going to read here in just a moment that spurred this episode. So I think going forward, I might cancel the title noise complaints. I'm not sure, but I might cancel it in order to just kind of make this more of an advice corner or a ask corner or, or, you know, whatever. I just think that I think it's about being a little bit more helpful, a little bit more conversational, a little bit more open with all of you watching this and less about being structured in kind of a theme of a show. Does that make sense? I don't know. Maybe it does. Maybe it doesn't. It made a lot of sense like 1130 last night before I was going to bed. I'm like, oh, that's what I should do. But anyway, moving on. Uh, thank you guys so much for watching that episode uh, dealing with audiophile addiction or hi-fi equipment addiction, being a gearhead. Uh, I think it's something that we all deal with. I know that I deal with it every single day, whether it's with hi-fi stuff or camera equipment or even this channel. Um, you know, I, I always want to continue to kind of push the boundaries and, and make things better and oftentimes we believe that by spending money or getting new things or new equipment or the latest equipment, that makes something better as opposed to simply just learning to use what we have to a better degree and becoming masters of what we own versus, uh, you know, chasing, chasing something new. Not to say that buying new isn't bad or is bad. It's not. Buying new is perfectly acceptable. But anyway, I digress. So this letter comes from Alex D. The reason I'm writing to you is because I'm confused with how to proceed. When it comes to anything related to audio equipment, I'm about as inexperienced as they come. I barely understand how a preamp works, let alone how integrated amps, receivers, etc., relate to loudspeaker performance, but I'm open to learning. If you wouldn't mind, I'm wondering if I could have a bit of advice from you on this. If you were in my shoes, how would you keep things as affordable, simple, and enjoyable as possible? Something tells me it would be too easy to simply plug in my Orbit to the L100 Classics like I do my Stanmore, even though I have the Pluto preamp built in. With that in mind, are there any additional components that are necessary to make this happen? Or is a preamp simply enough? Something tells me it can't be that simple. Essentially, I'm a teacher with a pretty limited budget. I'm not an audiophile, but a music is a big part of myself and my girlfriend's life to consider investing in better speakers, and in this instance, the L100s. I don't know what additional equipment is needed, and if any is. We'd be looking to keep it as affordable as possible without totally compromising the sound of the JBLs. I realize this is a pretty broad question, but any recommendations from you would go a long way in increasing my confidence with this. I want to break it down first by saying I don't think there's anything wrong with aspiring to the JBLs. I really don't. Uh, obviously, I'm I'm biased towards them. They're, they're my speaker of choice. I happen to really love them, and I even love them when they're not playing music. I just like seeing them in my living room. So I get it, Alex. I get it. I totally get it. And to say that aesthetics did not play a role in my decision to keep them would be an outright lie. They, they absolutely did. I think they look cool as, cool as hell. Um, that being said, if you're going from a Marshall, like Bluetooth kind of all in one soundbar integrated stereo boombox thing, I don't think the next leap for you are the JBLs. Sorry. And that's, that gets to one of the questions about how do we keep this as affordable as possible? I don't think you go from that type of a loudspeaker, that type of a setup right to a $4,000 a pair of speakers having never done this 
before. So yeah, I would probably not steer you towards uh, JBL L100s, to be honest with you. And and getting this and opening this up to the to the to the class, if you will, I would say that for a lot of people, um, yes, spending money on on loudspeakers is is good. It's a better investment, in my opinion, than other things. But overspending on loudspeakers or buying the wrong loudspeakers straight away is equally bad. So in this instance, it sounds like you have a mono type all in one sort of speaker, in which case you need to first experience true stereo imaging. And if you want something that's as simple as being able to put a record on and turn the volume or your product on and the volume up and down like you have now, there are ways of accomplishing that with separate loudspeakers. I mean, take for instance, the Kanto YU6s behind me. These are not as expensive as JBL L100s. They would allow you that same level of simplicity that you're used to, but now you would get to experience a true stereo sound field to then educate yourself and build off of from there. And when I say build off of, I don't mean like, oh, you're gonna be able to add things to this, because you're not, you're not. But you could also get something like this and decide for yourself or realize that that's all you really need. That's all you ever really needed. And there's nothing to build upon. Or you get something like this, go, oh my God, I didn't know it could be this good. Two speakers, so much better than one. I'm, I'm ready to make the leap. In which case, these go to a different room in your house, get gifted to a friend or relative, and then you're off and running. But it, I, I, would, I would really urge caution between going from kind of a, a true all-in-one lifestyle type setup to something like $4,000 a pair loudspeakers, especially if you don't have a lot of experience in the middle ground. I, I just, I don't see that going well um, and, and being frustrating. But to, to try and simplify things, let's say we are going to go with some separate loudspeakers and they're not going to be powered. They're going to need amplification, and you're gonna need a preamp and all of this stuff. Well, let's look at what we have, and this is important to take stock of what you have. We have an Orbit turntable and a Phono preamp. And I can't remember, he, maybe the preamp's built in, maybe it's an Orbit special, maybe it's not. But we have a turntable, we have a preamp for that turntable. We really don't have anything else because the, the, the all-in-one loudspeaker is not going to help us any. If you've never, um, if you've never dealt with separates, I don't recommend starting there. I never do, uh, and I personally, having been a separates person, separates meaning a separate preamp and amplifier, two two boxes uh, separate from one another. Um, having been a separates guy for ten or fifteen years, and then only in the last five years or so, really diving into receivers and integrated amplifiers. I would urge you, Alex, and anyone watching this, if you're building a modest first time system, probably go with something like an integrated amplifier or a stereo receiver. And the reason for that is oftentimes they can sound just as good as separates, but more than that, integrated amplifiers themselves often have preamp outputs, which will allow you to add an outboard amplifier later in your journey should you want to effectively turning your integrated amplifier at that juncture into a preamp if you have powered speakers that means that the amplifier the power needed to drive those speakers is built in now with things like the canto yu6s they also have the preamp built in this is why you can plug things directly into these types of loudspeakers and these loudspeakers come with like remotes that let you switch between your inputs as well as control volume. But a passive loudspeaker like the JBL L100 does not have this capability. It needs amplification. It needs a preamp uh, in order to attenuate the volume. It needs sources in order to uh, play media that will then be translated into sound. So. In this instance, if even if you're going with passive loudspeakers, not as expensive as the L100s, but it's still kind of your first rodeo, I would urge you, 
to look at and shop for integrated amplifiers that have a preamp output so that down the road, if you want to experiment with amplifiers, you can. But to get started, your integrated amplifier is a preamp and an amplifier all in one. Connect some speakers, connect your orbit turntable, and away you go. As for the speakers, if you're going from a point source or single speaker uh, uh, lifestyle thing like the Marshall, honestly, honestly, I, I do believe that anything that you upgrade to around the two to four hundred dollar a pair price tag is going to be a market improvement. It's going to sound better. And it's not going to sound better because the Marshall is bad. It's just going to sound better because you now suddenly have true stereo imaging and that's going to open up a whole new world for you. A whole new world. So passive loudspeakers like, you know, uh, entry-level products from, say, Klipsch, entry-level products from JBL, JBL Stage, I think, uh, Polk Audio, um, Pioneer, Elac. These are all brands that, uh, Paradigm, that just off the top of my head are I'm rattling off that I know make really good, uh, you know, bookshelf or modest, modestly priced floor-standing loudspeakers that are easy to drive, easy to live with, have a modicum of style to them, and that will allow you to get your feet wet in the hobby and grow from there. Keep in mind, going starting small means that it's easier to take that system and potentially move it into another space as your system and needs grow. I think too often people chase like the mountaintop right away and they realize that they've never climbed before. And so I would, I would really encourage you to start very small, very modest, and, and to choose things wisely so that you can lay the most solid benchmark for yourself. To know that when you make an incremental improvement or a big improvement down the line, you know exactly what differences you're going to get and when those differences come home to roost, you're going to be able to appreciate them. I know when I was getting started, one of the very first integrated amplifiers that I ever, ever had, and I love it still to this day, and I wish I kind of still had it, the NAD uh, BEE series. Now, I know there are many different uh, amplifiers with the BEE uh, designation. I'll try and link to as many of them as I can for you. Uh, but when I was buying integrated amplifiers for the first time. There was only one uh, NED BEE integrated and it was fantastic. It was so good. It was like 45 watts, 50 watts of channel, stereo, did everything you needed. And I wanna say that one back in the day cost me $379, but I know there's even cheaper ones now. Cambridge Audio comes to mind. They have some great ones. Music Hall has a pretty decent one, but even the big box, Guys, like we've been talking about, Marantz, Denon, Onkyo, Yamaha, they all make fantastic uh, stereo receivers or integrate stereo integrated amplifiers, some of which even have preamp outputs to add amplifiers later. Uh, so that's where I would start. And I would probably, you know, two to $500 in the integrated amplifier range will do you just fine. I think you're gonna find uh, a market improvement over what you're used to hearing. And because you have a phono preamp or your turntable has a phono preamp, you don't need to necessarily shop for an integrated amplifier that has a phono preamp built in, which saves you potentially some money. Although most nowadays are coming with phono preamps built in. Um, speaker wise, like I said, I would probably look at another, you know, 250 to $400 range pair of speakers, maybe five, $500. But yeah, look at the usual suspects. You know, JBL has less expensive products and some of them even trade on that vintage quality. Uh, so look at those. Uh, JBL, Klipsch, Polk Audio, Sony, Pioneer, Elac, Paradigm. Um, Tekton has some uh, small bookshelf speakers that can be driven by anything. Um, yeah, I, I think, I think what you need is something just that that basic to get your feet wet. 
and and then decide from there after living with that kind of a system for say a year or two is it something that you even use is it something you use is it something that you enjoy is it something that you continue to look at listen to and go okay yeah this is this is for me because if it's not I don't want you spending $4,000. Uh, I don't. I don't want anyone spending $4,000 when four hundred dollars would have done them just fine. Um, and so, yeah, I would I would do that. But if and, and if you're like, oh my God, this already is just way too complicated, but I do want stereo imaging, you know, with your turntable, look at powered speakers, you know, Canto, Audio Engine, things like that are viable, viable options that allow you to have stereo imaging, to have kind of integrated performance, but even fewer components, even easier uh, livability. And maybe that is even enough for you. So yeah, that is my advice uh, for this particular episode, Alex. I hope that was helpful. I know you probably expected me to jump on camera and say, oh my God, yeah, by the, by the JBL L100s get this amplifier and away you go. But honestly, there's no way to do that truly, truly inexpensively, purely because the JBLs themselves are just, they're four grand. <laughs> they're $4,000. And if this is your first rodeo, you don't need to spend for 4,000 bucks. So yeah. So what do you guys think? Have I led Alex astray? What other options do you think he and his girlfriend should look at? Uh, let me know and let Alex know politely and constructively in the comments below. So anyway, I uh, thank you guys so much. Christy just, hey. Yeah, sorry. No, you're fine. Christy just got home. She went for a walk. So I'm going to go check in with her. But yes, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope this was helpful. And as always, you know the drill. The only person that has to like the sound of your system is you. So happy listening, everybody. And until next time, take care. Bye.